Alright, what's wrong guys? Luke have another PvP build for the Firezone patch on my Magicka Dragonite with a corrosive armor based build. With a ton of ulti region with three ulti region sets. The first one gives major heroism with Drake's Rush. When you bash an enemy, you gain major heroism for 12 seconds, granting you three ultimate every 1.5 seconds. Only six seconds cooldown. Probably the strongest ulti region set out there. Combined with an old school set, a craftable set called Tara's Favor, when you dodge an attack, you receive the blessing of Tara, generating 12 ultimate over 3 seconds, only 3 seconds cooldown. So it gives 4 ultimate every 1 second, even way more than Majorism. But realistically, we don't roll dodge every 3 seconds, right? Let's say even if you just roll dodge every 10 seconds, we still have an ulti regen of 1.2 ultimate every second. Really nice. Combined with Bloodspawn, the ulti region monster set, and potentates just two pieces on the back bar for damage mitigation. With this build, depends on the situation, I would say my corrosive uptime is around 70 to 80%, sometimes even more. With corrosive, we gain max penetration on direct damage abilities, so every light attack, every bash, and even here in Growth in Flames, the first hit is a direct damage ability. Venomous Claw, first hit, so the initial hit is a direct damage ability. And Molten Whip, our spammable, plus Flames of Oblivion. So basically almost everything gets empowered. Coros is probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest ultimate in this game. Is it worth to stack as much ultimate as possible in a DK? I would say yes. With ulti regen, we can also sustain. Thanks to Battle Roar. With Battle Roar, we don't even need any sustain glyph. That's why I'm full. It used weapon damage on the jury. But I still use the Atonag as Mundus and the Clockwork Hitus Filet. Did some tests with the Tricet food. Works too. Let's talk about the traits. We need to roll dodge often with Tamas, right? That's why I use four well fitted pieces and three Impen. So it's a different playstyle, normally on DK you're more static with more sturdy pieces, so kind of block playstyle. With this one, it's different, we need to roll it with towers, means we need a couple of well-fitted pieces and some medium armor pieces. I only have three heavy and four medium, full prismatic glyphs on the body, full infused weapon damage on the jury, on the front bar two swords for extra weapon damage, Trades both decisive. I like to have even more ulti regen. A third if you can go main and learn and often decisive works too of course. Flame poison chant and back bar sword and board. Decisive sturdy on the ship prismatic roof with the double dot poisons this time. It helps for more single target pressure. A third if you use the escapist poisons. With this build I'm using the minor arism potions for even more ulti regen with magicka, stamina and minor arism. But those potions are really expensive. If you search for a low budget build, let's say if you don't have enough money for those minor heroism potions, just a terroric slash for the minor heroism buff. And you could D slot Engulf in Flames, put Degeneration on the front bar, and Terroric on the back bar. Like this, you don't need those expensive minor heroism potions, and you can just use simply the Tricer potions. Works too. Talking about the skills, on the front bar, Engulfing Flames, Venomous Claw, Why Engulfing Flames though, I don't need Noxious Breath, take a guess, if Corrosive we have Max Penetration, Major Beach would be nonsense, so I prefer more to empower my whip. Then Mortal Whip as spammable, Shattering Rocks as CC and Extra Heating, one of my favorite CCs in this game, it's not even dodgeable or blockable, Flame Soft Oblivion. Finish the sleep on the front bar. Alternative, go with Dawnbreaker. Since I really don't use often leap, I just wait more uh, for corrosive armor. Back bar degeneration for major brutality. Race against time, a snare removal, mage expedition, and minor force. Vega selfie, and for minor reserve, 3k armor. Then volatile armor this time instead of hardened armor. I've dueled some DKs and Volatile Armor deeds a ton of damage in a 1 1 situation. That's why I swapped Volatile. If you prefer a little bit more defensive playstyle, go with Hard Armor still. But this skill deeds insane amount of damage. 
Calculated blood as burst steel and corrosive armor, our main ultimate. As race, I'm done more. For extra weapon spell damage and magic has stamina. A better option would be Nord for extra ulti region or even Imperial for cost reduction. Mundus Diato for magica region, definitely needed, even with that amount of ulti region. Crocositos for the buff root. Attribute points, 37 points in magica and the rest in health. Potions, like I said, mainly the heroism potions, sometimes in under pressure situations, I use the twice the potions for the XHP. CPs, Blue Run Steady Aim, Mastered Arms, Exploiter and Ironclad, Sustained by Suffering, Slippery, Celerity and Pain's Refuge. With Shattering Rocks and Mortal Whip, we can set the enemy easy off balance for another 10% extra damage. Very nice. Combination, start to pre buff yourself with Race Against Time, Volatile Armor, Flames of Oblivion, then start with Degeneration, then go through Flames, Venomous Claw, Fossilize, use Corrosive, and then spam Molten Whip. Don't forget to bash on the front bar, like this you can proc Drake's Rush. And if you need more ulti regen, don't forget to roll dodge with Tama's Favor, like this you can gain even more ulti regen. That's it with another PvP build. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and I see you hopefully in the next video. Peace.